welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video which is possibly the most exciting video I'll ever make. So it is no secret just how much I've wanted a cat for a very long time now and I've never been able to get one and today I'm finally picking up my kitten. So I've wanted to have a cat for about the past 11 years and it's just never been possible until recently. I'd say I've been looking actively for about the past 9 months and I've made it more difficult because I've always wanted to have a ginger cat. I've always had my heart set on having one. One of my favourite books to read when I was growing up was a book called The Nine Lives of Montezuma by an author called Michael Monpergo and I just always wanted a cat after reading that book and specifically a ginger cat so that has made things a bit harder. Also I knew that I wanted to rescue or adopt one, I didn't want to just buy one from someone and then profit off backyard breeding their cats basically so that has also made things really tricky to find the right cat. But I finally found one and oh my god you guys, he's so cute, he's so fluffy, you're not even ready for how cute he is but I've already gone to meet him once just to make sure that I like him and he likes me and today we're finally picking him up. So I will talk a bit more in depth about his story later on in the video when I've got him with me just to give you guys a bit more detail but just to quickly sum it up, he was born in an unused garden shed at the top of someone's garden, his mother was a feral cat and unfortunately she went missing when they were about two or three weeks old. I think we do believe she did unfortunately get hit by a car, which is super sad. The kittens were crying and the family went out and found them and they've been hand raising them and bottle feeding them ever since, which means they are super friendly. So because of this, we don't exactly know how old he is at the moment. A vet has estimated that he's about seven weeks old and due to the color of his eyes, I'd say this is probably correct. And obviously in normal situations, I would always advocate for kittens and puppies to stay with their mothers until 8 weeks old, preferably 12 weeks old, but obviously he no longer has a mother unfortunately, and I did ask for him to stay with his siblings for a couple more weeks, but because they were already reserved before I reserved him, they've already long gone to their new homes, I think they went last week, so he is by himself at the moment, so him coming here is not going to make too much difference. I also think the family that have been fostering him and raising him are getting a new puppy next week so they're not going to want to deal with raising a puppy and a kitten at the same time and he's going to get so much more attention if he comes here and it's not going to make too much difference so we're going to pick him up today. So I've got everything ready, this is his cat carrier, I'll leave the link to this in the description if you're also in the market for a cat carrier, but I've put a really soft blanket in there for him to lie on, and then speaking of blankets, my lovely friend India sent us this blanket yesterday which perfectly fits his name which I don't think I've revealed yet. So his name is going to be Hubble after the space telescope, and he does already have his own Instagram which has over a thousand followers already which is crazy. So if you want to go and follow him on Instagram, I'll leave that linked in the description, but it's just Adventures of Hubble. But yeah, we've got everything set up and ready. This is his cat tree, which goes all the way to the ceiling. Obviously I'm taking the sign off, but all we need to do now is go and pick him up. Welcome home. You coming out? Come on then, good boy.
come get me come on come on oh such a fierce predator come on <gasps> stalk him can you stalk him slowly does it come on come on come on <laughs> How I've only had you for four days. I love you so much already. So I thought I'd just give you guys a quick update on how he's doing and talk to you guys a bit more about my plans with him because I know you guys are gonna have so many questions. So he is gonna be an indoor cat. I know a lot of people have very different opinions on this. Personally, I just don't want to be awake at night worrying if he's gonna come home or if something's happened to him. And I just don't want him to not live his full lifespan. I'd rather he doesn't get hit by a car. And pretty much every single day on like our local Facebook group, someone posts saying that a cat has been hit by a car quite near to me, so I'm not gonna risk that. I don't think it's worth risking. And that's just my personal choice. I want him to live as long as possible and have a really happy, healthy life without any risks of being hit by a car, stolen or going missing or anything like that. As well as that, I don't want him growing up to contribute towards killing a lot of the local wildlife. Cats are an invasive species, they're not native to the UK, and I don't want him going out, killing birds, and contributing towards that, so that's also another reason he's gonna be an indoor cat. I could probably make a whole video talking about this, but personally, that is just my choice. I don't want him getting killed or going out and killing other things. That being said, I do want to make sure his life is as enriching as possible. I have bought him a really tiny harness, which obviously doesn't fit yet, he is so tiny. But when it does fit and when he's had his vaccinations, fingers crossed, as long as he likes it, I want to take him on adventures, I want to take him hiking. Hubble, what are you doing? <laughs> And we also live close to a really nice woods, which I think you'll have a really nice time exploring and going on adventures too. So that's the plan. I want to harness train him and take him on little walks just to get him that outside time too. And also we are kind of in the process of buying a house. Obviously at the moment we're renting this house and we can't really make modifications to the garden. But when we've got our own house, hopefully sometime next year, we do plan on cat proofing it and making it a safe space that he can also have access to without being a risk to himself or a risk to local wildlife. Also, I know a lot of people are gonna have questions about how I have a cat and also have rats and mice at the same time. It is entirely possible, thousands of people have cats and small animals like rabbits, hamsters, rats, mice, and as long as you're sensible and you're not stupid about it, it is entirely possible. So he actually has not really ventured upstairs by himself. He doesn't know they exist. He has watched a couple of videos of them, but apart from that, he has no idea the rats and the mice even exist, obviously because they have their own pet room and it is gonna stay that way. They are gonna have their own separate space and the door to that is always kept shut anyway. So he's never gonna have unsupervised access to that room and he's not gonna be too much of a risk to them, fingers crossed. So my plan with this, and kind of the reason I wanted a kitten in the first place, is just to give him as much of a chance to be desensitized to them and not pose as much of a risk. I'm hoping if I can get him used to being around them and in the house with them, and obviously not letting them interact, because I know again this is a controversial topic. Some people let their rats and their cats interact. I have no intentions of doing that. I just don't think it's worth the risk. It's not gonna benefit him, it's not gonna benefit them, and I just don't want to risk it, but I would like them to live in the same house happily together and also him be able to be in the room with them and not bother them. So we are gonna be working on that, but I'm not gonna be allowing them to interact face to face or outside of the cage because I just don't think it's worth the risk. So yeah, apart from that, he's been doing so good. I feel like he's already grown so much already. When we got him, he was about 555 grams and he's already about 650 grams. So he's putting on the weight, which is good because he is absolutely tiny. As I said at the start of the video, we don't entirely know how old he is because he was found outside. I do think he's a bit younger than I was told by the person that found him. I won't really know until I take him to the vets but he's not booked in for his first vaccinations until the 14th of October. There has been a bit of a delay just because of COVID, all the appointments and stuff are backlogged, so I've not been able to get him in for his first vaccination, microchip, checkup, everything like that, until the 14th, so that is a little bit of a wait, but hopefully they should be able to give me a bit more of an estimate how old he is, and also he should be able to have his vaccinations at that point, because I think right now he is a little bit too small, and he doesn't quite weigh enough to have his first vaccination.
But it's been really sweet watching him do things for the first time. I don't think he had any cat toys in his previous home. Just because they were dog people, they didn't have any cat toys. And obviously it was quite unexpected to find them. So it's been really nice watching him learn how to play with things. He's growing so much in confidence. He's learning how to scratch his scratch bowl and learning how to stalk and chase his toys, which is really nice to be a part of and teach him to do those things. And every day he does something new and I'm just so proud of him. He does have a few favourite toys, I'd say his most favourite is a cat wand we have, it has different attachments and his favourite one is like a straw type of one, I think because it makes a rustling noise he loves that and that's definitely his favourite. Also he likes this little leopard print ball we have which I think is hideous but he loves it. Again that makes like a rattling noise so I think he likes it because of that but those at the moment are his two favourite toys. He also doesn't really drink very much, apparently that's quite common in kittens, they just tend to get most of their moisture from their wet food and he doesn't really touch the water bowl or the water fountain. I did get him a really cute water fountain which I like but he is low key terrified of it. I think he doesn't like the sound of the motor that pushes the water through the little flower thing but hopefully as he gets bigger because right now he's not even big enough to really reach it. I have had to put like a little step next to it but hopefully as he gets bigger he gets more used to it and does start to drink a bit more water because it's really weird having a pet that doesn't really drink much water but apparently Google says that's a normal thing so hopefully as he gets older he starts to drink a bit more. What is it? What do you think? Is it scary? <laughs> it's okay. I'm trying to think of other facts I've learned about him in the last four days. He doesn't like the cat bed I bought for him, which is not surprising. Cats are so fussy. I really like the bed. I bought it mostly because I liked it, but he's not used it once. He tends to sleep either on me, on the sofa, or on the spare sofa cushion behind the sofa, or my boyfriend's also made him a little den next to his computer because he likes to sit by his feet when he's working and I'm upstairs doing stuff or out at the post office or something. He really likes to sleep next to him whilst he's working, which I think is so cute. He also cries when he poops, which I mean, we've all been there sometimes, but it's really sad. He makes these sad little meows when he's pooping, which is handy for me because I can tell the difference between when he's going for a number one and a number two, and I know to jump up and clean it straight away. So handy for me, but also really sad because he just sounds really sad when he's pooping. But again, apparently that is quite common for kittens his age, but it's just really sad. He sounds so sad when he's doing it. So there's definitely a lot of things that I bought for a cat expecting to have an eight week old kitten, a 12 week old kitten, that's just far too big for him. I was never expecting to rescue a kitten quite as small as he is. So a lot of my things are still in the cupboard, unused at the moment, just because he is so small. I did buy him a nice big hooded litter tray and I don't think he'd be quite used to the flat bit yet but also I felt like it was just a bit too big for him. It does come quite far off the ground to jump in and when we got him he wasn't really jumping or moving in the way that an eight week old kitten would so I did have to buy him a temporary small litter tray which he's been going in completely fine. He's so good with his litter tray but I feel like because he's growing and moving a bit better I will probably switch him to his big main litter tray sometime soon possibly in a couple of weeks but I just felt like at the time he was too tiny to use it. Also I bought him things like a radiator bed, cat trees, he's not even really been on the cat tree because he just doesn't know how to use it. Also I got him the cutest collar but I think the breakaway limit is £2.2 and he's only about £1.5 at the moment so he can't safely wear his collar at the moment. My best friend also bought me the cutest name tag with his name on it so I'm really excited for when he can finally wear them but at the moment he is just far too small. I also thought it was worth mentioning that he is going to be neutered as soon as he's big enough and old enough just to end the cycle of cats breeding when there's no need to be. His mum was part of a feral colony and unfortunately any charities contacted by the family that found them weren't really interested in capturing her and spaying her and this is not her first litter, this is not her first rodeo. She has had multiple litters in the past that they found and raised and tried to ask these charities for help and no one's really been interested in catching her or spaying her which is a shame but the cycle of kittens that don't need to be brought into the world there's already far too many cats in the world is going to end with him because we are going to get him neutered. 
But I think it would be really interesting to do a DNA test on him. There's not as many cat DNA test brands out there compared to dogs, but I just think it'd be really interesting. Obviously, I don't really care what the results come back as. I love him regardless of what breeds he's got, whether he's just a mix, whether he's just a domesticated long hair. But apparently his dad is actually a local Maine Coon, which again, has not been neutered for whatever reason. Please be new to your cats. But I think it would be really interesting because he does have some features that do remind me of a Maine Coon. He has like the tufty ear bits, so I think that would be interesting, possibly a future video idea to do a DNA test on him in the future. But he's just everything I could have hoped for in a cat, especially considering he was found outside and he was feral, he's done so good and he's just the cuddliest little thing. I just wanted something that I could have a bit of a closer bond with, that had a longer lifespan that wasn't gonna pass away within a year or two like my rats do. And I just felt a bit lonely, like I live here with just my boyfriend, all of my friends and family are over an hour away and I just wanted something else I could have a closer bond with and I'm just really happy that I found him. He also does this really sweet thing where he comes up to you for a kiss, you kiss him on the forehead and he kind of nuzzles you back, which is so cute. Yesterday he did stick his tongue up my nostril, which I didn't really appreciate, but as you can see, he's just the sweetest cat and I'm just obsessed with him. I love him so much. I know it's only been four days, but I just, my heart is just so full. As well as him being this relaxed and cuddly, he is also super playful. He has his mad moments where he zooms around the house and I'm getting nothing done. I'm just playing with him all day and honestly, I'm loving it. So yeah, that is pretty much it in terms of Hubble at the moment. I've only had him for four days, so I'm really excited to learn more about him. Do let me know down in the comments if there's any other cat related videos you want to see. I appreciate that's not my usual content, but if you would like to see more Hubble content, give me some ideas and I'd be more than happy to film them. As I said, he does have his first vaccination, microchip and checkup on the 14th of October. As I said before, that's the soonest date I could get just because of the backlog with COVID. So if you guys would like me to vlog and take you along with that, I would also be more than happy to do that too. But that is it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed meeting Hubble for the first time and I hope you're excited to see him in future videos. But in the meantime, if you want to get your Hubble fixed, you can go and follow him on Instagram. I've been posting pics of him pretty much every day and really funny stories of him too. So make sure you're following him on his Instagram. I will also leave that linked in the description. But we're gonna go now. I'm gonna go and cuddle him whilst he sleeps. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys. Bye.